Welcome to Vango Notes for Human Resource Management, 11th edition, by Gary Dessler. Chapter 6, Employee Testing and Selection. Section 1, Big Ideas. It's become part of today's language, and you've probably said it. What is this common phrase? Google it. The Internet's most popular search engine, Google, has become part of pop culture. To keep up with its growth, Google hires thousands of people a year. It used to conduct a grueling interview process with job candidates. But it recently changed its employee screening procedure because it can't afford to be bogged down by such a slow hiring process. Once companies like Google have recruited a pool of applicants, the next step is to select the best candidate for the job. This usually means whittling down the applicant pool by using various screening tools and techniques. But what is a test, and what do we need to know about them before we use them? Let's look at some basic testing concepts. A test is basically a sample of a person's behavior. Before a company uses a selection test or other selection tool, it must determine that the device is both reliable and valid. A reliable test produces consistent scores when a person takes two alternate forms or takes the same test on two or more different occasions. So, if you score 90 on an intelligence test on Monday and 130 on Tuesday, you probably wouldn't have much faith in that test. A lot of things can cause a test to be unreliable. For example, the questions may do a poor job of sampling the material, or there might be errors due to changes in the testing conditions. But although reliability is indispensable, it tells us only that the test is measuring something consistently. It doesn't prove that you're measuring what you intend to measure. For example, a 33-inch yardstick will consistently tell you that 33-inch boards are 33 inches long. Unfortunately, if what you're looking for is a board that's one full yard long, your 33-inch yardstick, though reliable, is misleading you by three inches. What you need is a valid yardstick. Validity tells you whether the test or yardstick is measuring what you think it's supposed to be measuring. For instance, some tests are more clearly representative of the behavior being sampled than others. A keyboarding test clearly responds to an on-the-job behavior for an office worker, while a test on the periodic table of the elements clearly doesn't. So, test validity answers the question, does this test measure what it's supposed to measure? Put another way, Validity refers to the correctness of the inferences that we can make based on the test. For example, if Jane gets a higher score on a mechanical comprehension test than Jim, can we be sure that Jane possesses more mechanical comprehension than Jim? On employee selection tests, validity often refers to evidence that the test is job-related. In other words, that performance on the test is a valid predictor of subsequent performance on the job. A selection test must be valid since, without proof of validity, there's no logical or legally permissible reason to use it to screen job applicants. In fact, equal employment law requires that tests be valid. Despite these challenges, many employers use selection tests. For example, one survey showed that about 41% of companies test applicants for basic skills. About 67% require employees to take job skills tests, and 29% require some form of psychological measurement. And employers don't use tests just to find good employees, but also to screen out bad ones. Occupational fraud and abuse reportedly cost U.S. employers about $400 billion a year, or about $9 per day per employee. No wonder prudent employers test their applicants. But just what types of tests are used for selection? Let's look at a few. We can conveniently classify tests according to whether they measure cognitive abilities, mental abilities, motor and physical abilities, personality and interests, or achievement. First, cognitive tests include intelligence tests and tests of specific mental abilities like memory or inductive reasoning. For example, Intelligence or IQ tests are tests of general intellectual abilities. They measure a range of abilities, including memory, vocabulary, verbal fluency, and numerical ability. 
You might also want to measure motor abilities such as finger dexterity, manual dexterity, and reaction time. For example, if hiring airline pilots, you can use the Crawford Small Parts Dexterity Test to measure the speed and accuracy of simple judgment, as well as the speed of finger, hand, and arm movements. You might also need tests of physical abilities, such as lifting strength or body coordination. Lifeguards must show they can swim a course before they're hired. However, a person's cognitive and physical abilities alone seldom explain her job performance. Other factors like motivation and interpersonal skills are very important. So, employers use personality tests to measure and predict these intangibles. For example, as part of its selection process for CEO candidates, Hewlett Packard put its candidates through a two-hour, 900-question personality test. Finally, companies may use achievement tests to measure what candidates have learned. Most of the tests you take in school are achievement tests. They measure your job knowledge in areas like economics, marketing, or human resources. Achievement tests are also popular in work, where, in addition to job knowledge, they may measure an applicant's abilities. A keyboarding test is an example of an achievement test. Regardless of the type, some form testing is usually a part of an employer's selection process. Remember, human resource managers must make sure the tests are both reliable and valid. And for a selection test to be useful, its scores should be predictably related to job performance. In fact, under equal rights legislation, an employer may have to prove that its tests are predictive of success or failure on the job. Today, even some online dating services like eHarmony.com have prospective members take online personality tests and reject those who, its software judges, are unmatchable. So, in today's world, your scores on selection tests may dictate either your next job or your next date. That's the end of this section. Section two: Practice questions. Okay, now that we've reviewed the chapter, let's see how much you've retained. I'll give you a series of multiple choice, true, false, and essay questions to think about. After a few seconds for each, I'll give you the correct answer and an explanation. Let's start with multiple choice. Ready? Question one: Selecting the right employees is important because it has effects on performance, costs, and a. Legal obligations, or B. Strategic planning. The answer is A. Legal obligations. Equal employment laws require non-discriminatory selection procedures for protected groups, and courts will find employers liable when employees with criminal records or other problems use access to customers' homes or similar opportunities to commit crimes. Question two. To be effective, selection tests must be both reliable and a consistent, or b valid. The answer is b. Validity tells you whether the test is measuring what you think it's supposed to be measuring. Question three: We can classify tests according to whether they measure physical abilities, personality, and interests, achievement, or a. Mental abilities, or B, job performance. The answer is A, mental abilities. Cognitive tests include tests of general reasoning ability and tests of specific mental abilities like memory and inductive reasoning. Question four: Typical work simulation exercises include the in-basket management games and A, leaderless group discussions. Or B, interest inventories. The answer is A. In leaderless group discussion, trainers give a leaderless group a discussion question and tell members to arrive at a group decision. They then evaluate each group member's interpersonal skills, acceptance by the group, leadership ability, and individual influence. Okay, let's try a few true/false questions. Question five. Most employers try to verify the job applicant's background information and references. True or false? The answer is true. 
Commonly verified data include legal eligibility for employment, dates of prior employment, military service, education, identification, county criminal records, motor vehicle record, credit, licensing verification, social security number, and reference checks. Question 6. Most firms still use the polygraph, or lie detector, for honesty testing. True or false? The answer is false. The use of polygraph testing is severely restricted under current law. Question 7. Graphology, also known as handwriting analysis, has some resemblance to projective personality tests and is thus a valid selection tool. True or false? The answer is false. Although some firms continue to use graphology, studies suggest it is generally not a valid selection tool. Question 8. Once an employer extends an applicant a job offer, a medical exam is often the next step in the selection process. True or false? The answer is true. The pre-employment medical exam establishes a record and baseline of the applicant's health for future insurance or compensation claims. How are you doing so far? Ready for some short essay questions? Okay, here's the first of two. Question 9. What are the five steps of the validation process? The five steps of the validation process are to analyze the job, choose your tests, administer the tests, relate the test scores and the criteria, and cross-validate and revalidate. Last one, question 10. What aspects of personality are measured by the Big Five personality test? The Big Five personality test measures the personality dimensions of extroversion, emotional stability neuroticism, agreeableness, conscientiousness, and openness to experience. That's the end of this section. Section 3, Key Terms Okay, now we'll review some of the chapter's key terms. I'll give you the term and pause a few seconds while you mentally define it, and then I'll come back and state the definition. Ready? Question 1. What is negligent hiring? Negligent hiring is the hiring of workers with questionable backgrounds, without proper safeguards or background checks. Question 2. Define reliability. Reliability is the consistency of scores obtained by the same person when retested with the identical or alternate forms of the same test. Question 3. What is test validity? Test validity is the accuracy with which a test, interview, and so on measures what it purports to measure or fulfills the function it was designed to fill. Question 4. What is an expectancy chart? An expectancy chart is a graph showing the relationship between test scores and job performance for a group of people. Question 5. What is an interest inventory? An interest inventory is a personal development and selection device that compares a person's current interests with those of others in various occupations in order to determine the individual's preferred occupation. Question 6. Define work samples. Work samples are actual job tasks used in testing an applicant's performance. Applicants are presented with situations representative of the job for which they are applying and evaluated on their responses. Question 7. What is the work sampling technique? The work sampling technique is a testing method based on measuring performance on actual basic job tasks. Question 8. What is a management assessment center? A management assessment center is a simulation where management candidates are asked to perform realistic tasks, tests, or games in hypothetical situations and are scored on their performance. Question 9. 
What are in-basket exercises? In-basket exercises confront the job candidate with reports, memos, and other materials collected in the actual or computerized in-basket of the job she is about to start. The candidate is evaluated on the action she takes on each item. Last one, question 10. What is predictive validation? Predictive validation is a dependable way to validate a test by administering it to applicants before they are hired and later comparing their test results to their actual performance to gauge the test's predictive power. That's the end of this section. Section 4, Rapid Review Are you ready for the exam? Let's see. In this section, I'll give you a question and pause for just a few seconds before giving you the answer. Ready? Question 1. What is criterion validity? Criterion validity is a type of validity based on showing that scores on the test or predictors are related to job performance or criterion. Question 2. What are the advantages of the work sampling technique? The work sampling technique measures actual job tasks, is not likely to be unfair to minorities, does not delve into the applicant's personality or otherwise invade privacy, and exhibits better validity than other tests. Question 3. What is content validity? A test is content valid if it contains a fair sample of tasks and skills actually needed for the job. Question 4. What are management games? Management games ask participants to solve realistic problems as members of simulated companies competing in a marketplace. Question 5. What do personality tests measure? Personality tests measure basic aspects of an applicant's personality such as introversion, stability, and motivation. Question 6. Name the three ways to estimate a test's consistency or reliability. The three ways to estimate a test's consistency or reliability are retest estimate, equivalent form estimate, and internal comparison estimate. Question 7. How can employers protect themselves from negligent hiring claims? Employers can protect themselves from negligent hiring claims by scrutinizing all information supplied by the applicant, getting applicants' written authorizations for reference checks, and checking references, saving all information obtained about the applicant, rejecting applicants who make false statements, and taking immediate disciplinary action if problems arise. Question 8. What is face validity? Face validity is the obviousness of the link between the test and performing the job. Question 9. Managers can avoid equal employment opportunity problems simply by avoiding selection tests. True or false? The answer is false. EEO guidelines and laws apply to all selection devices, including interviews, applications, and references. Last one. Question 10. What are situational tests? Situational tests require examinees to respond to situations representative of the job. That's the end of this section. This concludes the Van Gogh Notes for this chapter. We hope you found this audio review helpful. Be sure to check out other Van Gogh Notes for textbooks published by Pearson Education.